to get united. Like, what we got to do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. There's one letter in the alphabet that new graffiti artists seem to really struggle with. So today, I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys about that letter. Now, check this out. We're also going to be looking at some lessons regarding throw-ups and hand cells. And we'll be doing all that while looking at the incredible work of Ancor. So stick around and check out Ancor in the description down below. Now, look at this piece. Tell me that's not dope. That is absolutely sick. So for those of you guys who may not be able to read graffiti all that well, we have a lowercase a right here. You have have an uppercase N, you have K, which comes over here, you have a simple O, and then you have a very, very stylized R right there. Notice how each individual letter is pretty heavily stylized. On the lowercase A, typically this form of an A is done like that. That one box at the top, two box being the side, and then you have three, four, five boxes total. But you'll notice his A breaks this section into two different boxes, adding one additional box to this structure. While the N is also pretty simplified, the K does end up getting a couple of boxes added to it as well and obviously once again the R is pretty stylized but check out the letter O every single new graffiti artist I'm telling you I have critiqued thousands tens of thousands of graffiti artists over the years every single new graffiti artist heavily stylizes the O the reason for this is because the O is one of the simplest letters out of the box right without any styling just your basic print font the letter O is extremely simple so when you put it next to all these other letters like K's R's S's E's it's easy for the O to look too simple. The new graffiti artist gets nervous when they see this and they heavily stylize the O. This is a mistake. Once you already know what you're doing, once you already like are really good at graffiti, you can do whatever you want. But for a new graffiti artist, when you stylize the O, it tends to go too far and it leaves all the other letters in the dust. And this is a perfect example. You have an extremely incredible graffiti artist here with a heavily stylized piece overall and yet the O remains simple. Understanding when to add style is extremely important and having skill means understanding when not to add style. That's part of having skill. And Ancor here has enough understanding, enough knowledge, enough skill to know that if he would have heavily stylized the O in the same fashion that he heavily stylized the R, then the O would have really blown out this piece in a way that might have been damaging to the other letters. So they keep the O simple. Instead, opting for little wisps of extensions and interior details and other such things like that in order to help accent it and add that flow, that letter uniformity with the other letters. That way it doesn't look outcast. It's still included in the actual word itself. And that's what you guys want to be doing with your letters. And that simplicity is something we get to check out in his straight letter here as well. Once again, this is, you know, just a normal straight letter, so it's not going to be crazy wild style. Obviously, that's the whole point of a straight letter, right? <laughs> but you do have some extensions here, right? You got a little bit of a serif with an extension after. Same thing here where you have the serif and then an extension after. And that is a pretty common theme throughout this entire piece here. But the O, once again, is extremely simplified. You don't have to do much to the letter O in order to make it look dope. Just focus on making the letter O look like it's a part of the same piece and you'll be fine. Now check out this hand style. Once again, for those of you guys who are newer to graffiti, I'll go ahead and point out the letters for you. You have a lowercase a right here, right? Really, really dope A. I gotta say, I love the way this looks. You have an N, which is pretty simple. You got the K, the O, and then once again, a really stylized R. And there's an important lesson we can learn here. Once again, we're gonna be focusing on style and how he implements it here. Now, when we check out the A, you'll notice it's not only really massive, but it's also pretty stylized. This really helps out to balance the R. But then we go to the N, to the K, and to the O, and all three of these letters are really simple. None of them have all that much style at all. They're practically basic print font with a little flare on top of it. The point here being is you don't have to add style to everything. A mistake most new graffiti artists make is they try to cram as much style as possible into as many letters as possible, not realizing that that's completely unnecessary. Usually adding style to one or two letters is enough in order to make the hand style really pop, but in order to add that style in the first place, you have to have a deep understanding of what it is you're doing in the first place, right? You have to understand how the letter R works in order to be able to go ahead and make it function properly. And we see him do that with his letter R. And this leads me to tell you, before one of you guys watching this video tries to copy this R, understand this R that he's doing is not going to work for all of your guys' hand styles. The reason it works for him is because he's tailored this entire tag to flow and to function with this kind of style that he's adding to the R. So don't bother just copying this. If you've tried to go ahead and emulate somebody else's style and you can't figure out why it's not working for you, that's the reason. You're copying a solution to a problem you're not having. Like I said in a different video, it's the equivalent of taking a math test and looking at your homie, answer four plus four equals eight, and you look at that number eight and you go, all right, dope, I'll go ahead and copy that and put that right next to two plus two. Two plus two doesn't equal eight. You just copied the right answer for the wrong problem. And that's why copying doesn't really help. Now, you know the dope 
tough work from this dude couldn't stop there. We had to check out his throw up, and honestly, this is probably gonna be the thumbnail. Because look at this thing, it's 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 incredible. And just like everything else with the video, you'll notice once again, just like I said, the O is really simple. Now, for you newer graffiti artists, you probably would not want to put your O this high up, but he knows what he's doing. He can make that function. Keep in mind what I said before about copying people's styles and why it doesn't work. But notice how simple the O is. That is important to know. And that's something that's gonna be applicable to your own work as well. Also, knowing that the O doesn't really have any natural hard edges because it's a, it's a circle, he's made sure to include and incorporate a lot of rounder edges to his letters. That way it helps flow the letter uniformity and the line uniformity with the O. This is incredibly important in order to help the O feel at home within the grand scheme of the whole name. One of the key points with throw-ups as well that a lot of newer graffiti artists overlook is how closely you position each letter to be, right? If you position them too close, then you kind of overlap a little bit too much and you get rid of one letter, kind of hiding the letter that's being overlapped. If you put them too far away, then you have too much negative space and you decrease flow as a result. And Core does a really good thing here, where he's got his letters positioned just right. And you'll see that right here. The A comes right over to here, but notice how it leaves a little bit of a gap right there for the end's left leg to show through. This part doesn't get overlapped. Otherwise, I'll show you what happens. The structure in this area gets cut off, and now this bottom piece is completely disconnected from the end, meaning the end practically stops right there, instead of right here. What I also like is he separates his serifs, being this part right here and right here, from the actual leg itself. It's easy to forget that the serif needs to be separated from the leg. In order to do that, he adds this little line right here. This means everything on this side is the actual leg of the N, everything once again on this side is the leg of the K, and it means that everything on this side is the serif, and that helps to build structure back into your throw up. Structure is one of those things in throw ups that tends to kind of get diminished due to the lack of negative space as negative space increases structure. So adding these little inlines, if you will, helps to add that structure back into the letter. Really, really dope stuff overall. And Core's got absolutely awesome work. And if you want to go ahead and check them out, I got a link to them in the description down below. Also, dudes, while you're down there, let me know any other graffiti artists you'd like me to go ahead and do a breakdown on. This series is a load of fun and it really exposes me to other awesome graffiti that's out there. I mean, who doesn't enjoy looking at it, right? But on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you want the best how to do graffiti tutorials, we have that playlist right over here. Now, if you guys want to learn some more about graffiti, I've published a couple of ebooks you can check out in the cards somewhere, wherever they're at, with even more graffiti content right down here.